Welcome to Electro Online. In this example, we have a block that's being dragged across the floor. Notice there's a coefficient of friction between the block and the floor, and of course, we assume this is the kinetic coefficient of friction. And notice that the force is not being applied in the same direction as the motion. It's applied, applied at an angle of 30 degrees relative to the horizontal. We're assuming that the block is going to be moving at a constant velocity. And let's say that the mass of the block is equal to 10 kilograms. What we're trying to find is we're trying to find the force required to do so, to move the block at a constant velocity across the floor. And we're trying to find out how much work it will take to move the block 5 meters. Now that's the interesting part because we're pulling on the block with an angle relative to the horizontal. So how do you calculate the work? Well, we'll get there in just a moment. First, let's find out how much force is required. So we need to identify all the other forces on the problem. We do know that we have the weight pulling down. So that would be mg. And then, if we take the components of the force, which we're pulling, we'll then have a horizontal component. This would be equal to f times the cosine of theta. And then we have a vertical component, like this here, and that would be f times the sine of theta. So notice both the weight of the block, mg, and the force component of the force that we're pulling with, that's acting downward, they both push the block against the floor, and the floor, of course, will push back. That's Newton's third law for every action. There's an equal and opposite reaction. So the floor will push back with a normal force, and in this case, the normal force will equal to the sum of the weight of the block plus the vertical component of the force, so plus F times the sine of theta. Now the friction force. The friction force, let me use a different color here, will be in the opposite direction of the motion of the block, and the friction force, by definition, is going to be equal to the normal force times the coefficient of friction. Of course, the normal force is defined up here. Since we're told that there's no acceleration, V is constant, then the net force must be zero. So since, so if V is equal to a constant, that implies that A is equal to zero, there's no acceleration, and since F net is equal to the mass times the acceleration, since acceleration is zero, the net force must be zero as well. That means all the forces aiding the motion equal all the forces opposing the motion. So which forces are aiding the, the motion? Let me use a different color here. It's this component here that's aiding the motion of the block. It's pulling the block to the right. And it's this component here that's opposing the motion that's trying to keep the block from moving to the right. And so we can say that F net, by definition, is equal to all the forces aiding minus all the forces opposing that, that should be an S. So then we can say that the net force, which is zero, is equal to the force aiding, which is F times the cosine of theta, minus the force opposing, which is the friction force. All right, coming up here to complete that equation, we could then say that F times the cosine of theta is equal to the friction force, and so F, the force we're looking for, is equal to the friction force divided by the cosine of theta. But before I write that, you know what? I'm going to expand that friction force a little bit because I think I'm going to end up in another F term, another force term. So let's do that. So we have F times the cosine of theta is equal to the friction force, which is the normal force times mu. And the normal force, F cosine theta, the normal force is going to be mg plus f sine theta all times mu. And of course, this is mu sub k. Now we realize we have two force terms. We have a force here, we have a force there, so we have to move that over to the left side. So we end up with f times the cosine of theta minus f times the sine of theta times mu sub k is equal to mg times mu sub k. And so finally, we can say that F, if we factor out an F, that is equal to mg mu sub k, divided by what we have left when we factor out an F, which is the cosine of theta 
minus d sine theta times mu sub k. And then if we plug in all the numbers, we get the force by which we need to pull the block at a constant speed is equal to the mass times g times mu sub k divided by the cosine of 30 degrees minus the sine of 30 degrees multiplied times 0 0.2. So let's see here. The calculator. So we have 98 times 0 0.2, 98 times 0 0.2. And we divide that by uh, the 30, take the cosine of that, minus the sine of 30 times 0 0.2. The sine of 30 is 0 0.5 times 0 0.2 is 0 0.1. So minus 0 0.1 equals and it would take a force equal to 25.6 newtons. All right, now for the work done. How much work will it take to pull the block a distance of five meters? Now, what component of the force is pushing into the right? It's not this component because it's at an angle here. It's the horizontal component that's pulling the block across. So that component is doing the work. So therefore, we can say that the work done is equal to the force times the distance. And so actually, in this case, it's going to be force times the cosine of theta, that component of the force, times the distance. And so in this case, it's going to be F times the cosine of 30 degrees, multiply it times 5 meters. And so this becomes 25.6 newtons, multiply it times the cosine of 30 degrees, and multiply times 5 meters. So let's go ahead and calculate that. So times 30, take the cosine of that, equals times 5, and we get 110.8, about 111. And of course, the units for work is joules. So it takes 111 joules. And notice the key here is that we only take the component, which is in the same direction as the motion, to calculate the work done. Another way of thinking about it, if you've seen dot products, you can say that the work done is equal to the force dotted with the displacement. And in this case, that would be the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. So we could use the magnitude of the force and multiply it times the displacement, the distance of five meters, and then multiply that times the cosine of theta, but notice, we end up with the exact same equation that we ended up over here. So you can see that the concept here by taking the component in the same direction as the motion is the same thing as taking the dot product. And by definition, that's what the dot product is. And this is how it's done.